Hey everyone, do you know that feeling? You're building a habitat for, let's say, your artwork, and after you finish, you look at it and see and think, yeah, that's not really doing it. That's it's fine, but it could be better. But you don't really know how to make it better, because yeah, you just do everything they need to they need to have the plants, the rocks, the foliage type, and everything. But in the end, it doesn't look good. It doesn't. It looks out of place a little bit. You build another habitat for maybe tropical animals, and they don't really fit in, uh, together. What if I tell you that with just five easy steps, you can transform this habitat into something looking like this? Yeah, uh, same animals, same habitat size, but in my opinion, looking much much better looking much much more immersive to maybe the zoo you are building um, for example we are now in an european temperate zoo map here and it just feels much more fitting to that zoo so today's in today's video i want to show you five tips or five steps how to transform this habitat into such a habitat and we will do that one after each other each step follows the next you can build along if you want to so I will each in each step I will first show what the step is about what you can do and then I will build the stuff in this empty version here and I will speed these things up so we are not sitting here for an hour or something and you can build along if you want to but these five steps are really easy to follow they Maybe you require a little bit of practice if you doing it the first time, but if you practice these things more and more, you will get faster and faster. For example, for these two habitats, I yeah, it took me uh, I think yeah half an hour, 30 minutes somewhat in that direction. So it's the more you do it, the more the faster you become. So we are looking at five steps how to improve your habitats with just simple easy tricks. The first step is I think the most important and that is trees and other big foliage. It is the most important because this is what basically defines the area of your zoo. And here it is really important to know where your zoo is located. The most important things of these two <laughs> is yeah, the biome your zoo is located. Is it in a desert? Is it in a rainforest? In a temperate uh, area or an arctic area and additionally and this is but this is an additional fact where is your zoo located in on the, on the earth so is it in europe africa north america because this defines what plans you would or should addition uh, yeah in the best case use for your build for example if you are building in a dry desert it would be very weird to use pine trees there or other big yeah big trees from colder climates and uh, another way around if you're building in the in the arctic using stuff like cacti or acacia trees would also look very out of place so we are we will ignore the plant needs that these animals give us the artwork it would only require it, it would need yeah, plants from uh, africa which would look weird in a european setting so we will ignore that and we are looking for plants that are found here in Europe and in addition also North America because their plant rosters are pretty much similar in the tiger, temperate and tundra because these biomes are close to each other. So we, are, we will go for the black poplar, a very common tree in Europe and we will also go for the cypress tree and also very commonly found in Europe and then we are just placing a, a some here and there. An additional thing to that is because we are having an animal that loves open places having a heavily forested uh, exhibit would look a little bit out of place and would also maybe stress the animals. You can do that for animals that love forests like tigers, uh, deers or animals like the okapi. You, there you can really go all in with the trees if they still can move. But for animals that love more the, the open grasslands and such the prairie and the savanna, uh, I only will go for a couple trees so uh, it still kind of mimics their environment. So we will do that now and then I will go over to the next tip. So step number two is yeah the essentials for the animal which means food, 
water and housing. Enrichment, enrichment items you can do later, you can do them also now in this step, but you can also add them later when you now when you really know the layout of your habitat. So because we are using the artwork, we are selecting the artwork, we're going for a drink, for water, water station, I always love to use the water pipe because it is unlimited water and doesn't need to be refilled. We will place it here because it can't be really seen from the guest area, you only see the water thing there. Then we go for some housing, we will go for the burrow because we don't have an indoor area here dedicated. If you have your additional uh, terrain modifications you can do a little hill where you place this burrow so it looks like it's buried into the hill. We don't have that but we will still place it near a tree because animals love to burrow near roots for some reason. And then we go for a forage enrichment box, A because it gives us enrichment and C and B because it gives us food. We sink it a little bit down, like that. Then we take our flattened to terrain tool, make it a little smaller, we go in, and then we hide that. If you wanna know how to do that kind of stuff, I have a video, uh, yeah, I will leave a video at the end of this video where I show you guys how to hide enrichment items. And an additional thing we can already do is go in into the in the painting stuff and paint the ground around this enrichment item here a little bit browner like it is yeah, a bigger area and this is very heavily soiled. We can also do some some yeah, some earth around here where the entrance for the keeper is because then there will be less grass later and additionally where the animal would walk so through the burrow and to the drink stop you can also put a little bit of dirt down here so this would be areas where less plants would be because the animal walks more often there. So the third step, now we get into the meat and bones of the whole thing, is rocks. Rocks make every habitat uh, better and if you don't have rocks, yeah, remember to add them. And another thing we will now do is make us a template. Um, a thing many people do and tend to do, and this always looks a bit weird, is to place just these big rocks on the surface, cluster them a little bit together, and that's it. Why you can do that, there are better ways to do that. If you have been in the, in the nature, if you have been outside or to a real zoo, you always will see some small rocks everywhere around, between the plants, you will have small clusters of rocks and pebbles that will lie around. We try now to mimic that, and for that we take yeah, this little rock here, we turn on also random rotation all, and we place the first one. By the way, I also selected tiger, temperate, and tundra rocks, because rocks never all be in one color. Rocks have a myriad of different colors, so we also want to mimic that. So we're taking different colored rocks, and then we just sink them in so that they barely touch the surface, like that. And then we just place a couple together. We also take some of these, they have a nice, bluish hue and bluish color. Just place them a little bit around, place them close together and really that they only touch the surface ever so slightly. So to mimic these little pebbles and uh, little rocks lying around. Also we can yeah merge them a little bit like this. It's really no witchcraft what we do here. We are just placing some rocks here and there to create a nice template that we then can later use all the way around in the habitat. You can also use the biggest rocks, but I would always suggest using the smaller ones because it's easier to work with them. So, do we like that? Yeah, looks nice. So we now go in, multi-select, select the whole thing, save it as one group, so it's merged. And now we just go in and yeah, place them ever so slightly every, everywhere we copy them. We can also sink them a little bit down, so only a few of them show up. And that we will do around the habitat now to give the impression of little pebbles and rocks scattered around the whole habitat. So we have that now. Now we can also go in and place some bigger rocks to set a little bit of, yeah, of a theme, maybe some, some highlights into the habitat. With some bigger rocks here, we can now also turn off this. 
place them a little bit together and merge them also maybe a little bit and also do use different colors here again because as I said rocks never always are in the, all in the same color they have different colorations they yeah some are a little bit bleached by the sun others are yeah a little bit more wet maybe now this was already a little bit big I didn't like that that was too big for me for example you can just go in and set some yeah some statement rocks basically not too many we don't don't we won't, don't do don't want to overdo it uh, apart from if you are building yeah a habitat for an animal that lives maybe in a rocky place maybe in the mountains then we can go a little bit more crazy with the habitats uh, with the rocks but other than that we first want some rocks here and there to create a little bit of a nice scenery then first step and this really gives now the habitat its character is ground foliage. Yeah, we already planted the big trees to yeah, give the statements and we have some rocks here, here and there to give a little bit of texture. Now we want to go in and place the ground trees. And something you will notice if you have been to a real zoo or just outside is that you always have grasses everywhere. And similar to the rock where, to the rock thing where we made a template for these rocks, we will now create two to three different templates of mixed plants that we then also can copy around. I always love to use the buffalo grass because it has nice texture, it's also free and came with the la last update. Maybe we also take a little bit of a drier version here. We just place them together like that. Then we maybe take a different plant. I always love to use the Yorkshire fog grass. It was also free with the conservation pack. We just place them together a little bit like that. And we have our first template. So we save that. Then we go in again. We take a different plant. For example, since we are more in a temperate area, we can go in and use some bracken. Not too big. We wanted to have nice and fittingly. We go in and some use some bramble bushes to give a little bit of an undergrowth for the for the bracken, like that. A little bit around so it looks a little bit uniform, like that. So we have another another template, and then we want to create something with drain grass. Do we have drain grass in here? No, because drain grass is not from this biome, but it serves very well as yeah, grass for any kind of kind of thing. So we go for drain grass, then we can also go in again for the buffalo grass because it's also very nice for that. That And then a little bit of, of a secret tip is going in to, uh, not this, but into yeah, Oceana. Go for the, where is it? There is the Trioda grass and sink this in a little bit because this can give the impression of, yeah, wild wheat plants uh, or wheat in general. Wheat in general has a nice texture to it so we can go in. We can also place some here, save these two together and also save these, uh, not these, <laughs> save these. And then we do the same as with the rocks. We go in and we place these, tra these plants everywhere around the map. I would go with the bigger bushy versions a little bit here on the lesser side so it's not too overgrown maybe on the on the sides of the habitat where the animals will not be that often and then we jo just go in and do that for the whole habitat so let's do that The last step now is details. Details yeah, really give this habitat its character and for that I always love to go in with some logs. For example the African branches are really nice for that kind of thing. So we just place one here. Maybe you have an, another standing one over here. Maybe there was a little bush that, yeah, that dried out. We can go in, t place another one over here that l just lays a little bit in the grass like that 
And then we can also go into the habitat section, of course, deselect that. And there we have also a nice raster of little yeah, trees and logs here that came with an update. So we can have a dead tree over there. We can take this log, maybe ankle it a little bit on this rock here, like it, lay, like it lays on, on it, for example, like that. Nice. So that's so a little bit of details, a little of, of little branches and rocks scattered around, something like that. We can also go in and search for the saplings to create some easy bushes for self. And we go for the oak settling and we sink that in now. And yeah. This way you can easily make your own better looking habitat in just, what is the video about now? Maybe over 10 minutes, 16 minutes I think is what the recording says about this video. So in yeah, less than 30 minutes you can go in and make such, such a habitat uh, with some practice of course. You can then of course go in, make some detailing, delete some plants if you think they are too much. Add of course more enrichment items if you want to. But yeah, these five steps are the easiest thing in the world to follow to make awesome habitats. So we start with big trees, we follow by enrichment items and essentials like so housing, water and, and food. Then we go in with rocks, then we do the ground plants and then we go in for detailing with branches, dead trees, bushes, stuff like that. And yeah, then you are finished and you have a an habitat that already looks much more better than that one. Here I had of course had a little bit more time, so I had a little bit more time to detail, but in essential it's the same five steps. And yeah, you can do that for any kind of habitat in any biome, in any region. Of course, if you're building in the desert, you will have less trees and more ground plants, more grass, maybe even more rocks. And if you go yeah, into the jungle, you will have more trees and more, more plants, less rocks maybe. So really, yeah, let your heart and your de and your ideas flow into this build and it's really easy to follow. And yeah, if you have more tips and tricks and for this type of, of thing or of other things, let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you have any further questions about this, about these five steps. I will happily answer them. And until then, uh, I hope you had a lot of fun. I did. I hope it, this helps you in for the future of your habitats. And I hope I see you next week for the next video. Until then, stay safe, have a great time and bye bye everyone.